Okay, so for the beginning of this presentation, I'm going to start by showing this picture. And I'm going to ask the audience, what is this and where is this? You know, what trash is displayed here? Uh, I'm going to show the second picture and have them think about that question. What's being shown and where is this? And I'll have some audience question and answer at that point. So maybe somebody will say a beach in some country or you know, a dump, I don't know. The next slide, I'm going to say, this is that location where you saw that horrendous amount of trash. It's this place. Um, this is Tsunoshima Beach. And it's said to be one of the most beautiful beaches in Japan. And I'm going to tell the story of the first time I went, which is November of 2012. And I was told Tsunoshima was the most beautiful beach in Japan. And as you could imagine, when I first went, I saw refrigerators, televisions, and thousands of pa plastic pet bottles. And I honestly thought it was a dump. Uh, but something had to be done. And this is a picture of me actually carrying trash myself um, to my home. And uh, there was so much trash. You know, I thought, what difference can I make? You know, I didn't speak Japanese. There was a massive a problem here. Um, so I just tried, and as, as I said, I picked up something, and you see a toilet seat in this bag, there's some buoys, there's shoes, and I brought it home, because I, I needed to do something with it. Um, but at home, of course, uh, there's nowhere to put it, so I actually put the trash in my shower room, as you can see here, um, and it stayed there for over a month, and actually taking a shower, I had to walk over the trash, and I fell in it multiple times trying to get a shower, um, and, and it smelled horrible constantly. I mean, it was oozing black goo all over the floor. Um, but of course, you know, I don't know where to take this trash. Uh, so the next thing I thought to do was you know, to, to show people the trash I found. And I thought, how can I do that? So my idea was to have my first trash art show in my life. And it's funny, I still remember carrying the trash on my bicycle. Uh, to the art gallery and there's a toilet seat I made a toilet seat helmet and the police were very concerned with this this setup but I had no car and I wanted to show people the trash I found on the beach so the goal of the art was to take an environmental problem and bring it to the public's attention and this is an example of oyster farm tubes which pollute beaches near Hiroshima as well as various other types of cans which were placed in colored plexiglass boxes and displayed in an art gallery. As I said, we want to take problems and make them into something and make them uh, visually appealing for people. So this next thing is an example of an art show we did at N3 Gallery, so I hope you enjoy. So as I said before, um, that was this problem that we talked about, uh, taking the environmental concern, bringing it to the public's attention. 
Um, and the piece that I showed you in this video, there are two pieces. The first was a, a screen we created out of these oyster tubes. Uh, and the second was plexiglass boxes. And I put trash from different beaches in those boxes. And one, each one of those boxes represented a beach and the trash at that beach. And um, uh, as, as a presenter note, I'll actually show these boxes and I'll have some of these oyster tubes in my hands so the audience can see them. Uh, and and on a side note, actually, this, this piece was chosen as the top 80 art pieces in Yamaguchi Prefecture. So out of 500 artists who submitted work, um, Life Recycled was chosen as the top 80 for submitting the pieces in this video. So the next slide, um, this is the second part of the outreach, which was organizing beach cleanups. So this was actually a picture from the first cleanup I ever organized in my entire life. And it was attended by 15 people. And we collected a massive amount of trash on the beach, from oil barrels to buoys to shoes. We even found needles, just a, a huge assortment of some dangerous trash and just normal trash on the beach that I was very surprised. And this is the trash pile from the first cleanup. I mean, this is maybe over three meters high. I mean, it's, it's a huge amount of trash. And as I look at this picture, I think back to the first time I went to Tsunoshima and thought, what difference can one person make? In reality, what can I do? And I look at this and, you know, going from just picking up trash in a little net and keeping it in my bathroom to cleaning probably hundreds, thousands of pounds of trash, hundreds of bags by now with the over 11 cleanups we've done so far. You know, and this shows one person, a motivated person, can do anything if they choose to put their action towards it, choose to devote their life and devote time and energy towards it. You can make a huge difference. Now, the second part of this was we wanted to make a trash art organization. So, um, Making a trash art and organizing these events was becoming very expensive because it was almost all out of my pocket and um, the art shows were a few hundreds of dollars, all the equipment and paying for refreshments for people and transportation and reimbursements for gas. So with the help of many people, we formed an organization called Life Recycled, which was a beach cleaning and trash art organization. And we received grant funding of $1,000 from a local nonprofit. So this is a picture actually of a meeting we're holding uh, which is three members here, myself, uh, So and Teruki, who are uh, all members of Life Recycled, the actually founding members. And this is a flyer for one of the art shows we had, the community art show, Nomi Gomi. Uh, so, and I want to show you some pictures of beach cleanups we've done. So this is one of the first cleanups on Tsunoshima. This is a cleanup of Ayarugi Beach with the community members and some people from a nonprofit were there as well. Um, this is a cleanup from Tsunoshima Beach, maybe the fifth or sixth cleanup of Tsunoshima Beach we did. And we had a lot of volunteers come out. If you notice, we collected various items in the trash bags. You see nets, shoes, there are a lot of plastics, there are bottles, there's uh, uh, Asahi holders, beer can holders, there's oil barrels, fishing implements, a lot of stuff. Uh, and we also look at this picture. This is, we collaborate with a lot of other organizations to clean. And this is actually an outdoor adventure school. So uh, Boken Gako, an adventure school in Japan. And we collaborate with them to clean beaches. And we had this cleanup. There was maybe 40 or 50 people. And it's really cool. We actually transported the trash from the island by kayaks to a larger ship, which then transported the trash to the uh, to someone's home and then we separated the trash there and then the city came and picked it up. But it was a really uh, large process and organized by a man named Koji Hara who's very active in the community. Um, we also do outreach with kids which is very important. You know, In the end, kids are our future and I think we need to engage them constantly and show them that this trash, you know, we need to do something about this. But first, at this stage, let's make it interesting to recognize there's trash on the beach. Let's make it appealing in some way. So we've organized events for kids, and here are some. Here's one child painting buoys that we've collected at various beach cleanups. Um, so, what was actually cool is those buoys were displayed at an art show. So when people came, they saw these buoys. People wrote the kids wrote messages on these buoys, and they had their names. So these buoys took identities, you know, and they were people's art, and people were very excited to see their art in an art gallery and actually in a later art museum. Uh, and the next thing we're going to cover is a video by KRY. So this is a uh, Yamaguchi-based news network, and they covered our story and made a documentary about Life Recycled and the work we're doing. 
So let's watch that for a second. ドクター、ご自身ご自身に今なりました。今日の特集です。6月は環境現象です。山口県、私たちが世界に誇る美しい海を持つ下関市豊北町の津野島。その美しい津野島の裏側にある環境問題を皆さんはご存知でしょうか
when I first started, well, so this problem, a lot of trash, what can I do? What can one person do? At Gajin, what can a foreigner do to make a difference in Japan? So now I know I can do something. I can change what I don't like. I have the power to change my environment and to help people change the environment. Do something, make a difference because you can, because I can. で、観光で。はい。では このたくさんのゴミは翌日下関市に回収してもらいました。しかし綺麗になったのは海岸の一部分に過ぎません。マイケルさんの活動はこれからも続きます。We cleaned a lot of trash and that's great. Now the beach is it looks good. But we did this. So that's great. So that that what that's what makes me most happy knowing that my dream is to make a difference, to change something. And today, we did that. Okay, so uh, from that video, there was a few things I really want to talk about. Uh, the first thing that we've noticed was we, there was a chart that you saw, or a paper with uh, countries on it, and that was beach trash research that we were doing. And I didn't cover it a lot so far, but that is a very important part of what we do. So when I first started cleaning the beaches, many people told me that this is not Japanese trash. And some did not want to clean. They felt resentment toward cleaning other countries' trash, other countries' gomi. So I wanted to find out where the trash actually came from. Was it all trash from other countries or was some of it actually Japanese? So at this point, um, as a presenter note, I'll be asking the audience, where do you think it comes from? What's the breakdown? How much trash is Japanese? How much trash is Korean? How much trash is uh, Chinese, Taiwanese, etc., etc.? Um, so uh, I'll be showing this chart, which is... Uh, so the first research we've done Actually, I'm sorry, this is the, uh, third, the third round of research we did. And we found that 47% is Japanese, 31% is Korean, 22% is China, and we have 1% Southeast Asia. And then we have the other round of research we did, 69% Japanese, 12% 12, 12 Korean, 90% China and Taiwan. And I think this is very important because here we've conducted some research which shows where the trash comes from. And although there is some variation because of time and location, the results remain consistent that, of course, it's Japanese trash on Japanese beaches. Um, but what I think what it shows is that we need to approach the beach ocean pollution as an international community that works together to solve this problem. Uh, I mean, that is what we should take from this, that it's not one country's problem. It's every country's problem. And you know, I'm cleaning the beaches. There's no American trash in the beaches, but this is my environment and this is my world. You know, so I have a responsibility, as everyone else does, to clean wherever they live and wherever they live close to, to do something to impact the environment, to save it for ourselves and our future generations. Um, and one great thing I found uh, when I was visiting Tsushima, I actually I'll talk about this later, but I went by kayak from Japan to South Korea. Um, which is about 300 kilometers and I visited Tsushima and on Tsushima they have uh, many cleanups which are done with joint Japan and Korean cleanups so it's a very uh, beautiful thing with the community the Japanese and Korean community coming together as one to address this problem of beach trash so uh, but what's also required I think when we talk about a solution to this are, are innovative ways to address 
recycling trash and re and address the the massive amount of buoys and the nets that are collected what do we do with this stuff because we can't burn it all um, you know we can't bury it as, as we do in America so this is a, a new thing we're thinking about called EPR which is extended producer responsibility so I hope the video can can talk a little bit about this and if you have any questions we'll talk about that after so please check out this video as I said EPR extended producer responsibility Okay, so uh, let me actually go forward one slide. So let's talk about this for a second. Um, what this video is meant to represent are the, the brands that are on the beach. So if we look at beach trash, what brands do we find? And we find a lot of brands. We find Coca-Cola, Asahi, Itoi, a substantial amount of brands. And we actually did research as to what brands are on the beach. What do we find on the beach? And we look at those numbers. And of the items we could identify, so. Uh, when we collected this, there were many items which we couldn't identify, but we took the top uh, items which we could identify, which are the top six brands, and of the top six brands which we could identify, um, Coca-Cola was 46% of that, Asahi in a toy. And if we think about this, a company like Coca-Cola, which makes over 40 billion in revenue from the Asian Pacific region alone, I mean, we think they should be absolutely responsible to some extent in the effort to remove their products from our beaches. You know, I think we should really understand the effects of EPR, extended producer responsibility, meaning extending the producer's responsibility beyond the consumer life cycle. You know, they should help in these cleanups. They should take effort to maybe reduce the amount of plastic they use or make it more environmentally friendly in their bottles or, or in, their, in their plastic bottles and actually maybe come out and help clean up or think of solutions of how to recycle these products. Um, but one thing I want to talk about is Tsushima. Tsushima is a really interesting situation in the sense that they are looking for solutions themselves beyond producer responsibility. They're actually trying to find ways to take care of plastics and how to uh, buoys and, and uh, uh, poly polyurethane and items that are like of heavy plastics. So what do they do? Uh, here I'm going to show you a video of a beach trash recycling facility on Tsushima Island. And what I want you to look at first in this video is the black bags and the white bags. There are thousands of bags at this location. And no, it's not just dirt or whatever, you, you know, it's not Santa's presence. It's actually thousands of bags of beach trash. It's all beach trash that they collect and put here. So first, take the gravity of that situation in thousands of bags of beach trash. It doesn't go anywhere. It just gets put in bags and put somewhere. You know, it, it, it goes away from our view, but in Tsushima, they're actually trying to find a way to address it for good. So let's watch that video. それ
、回収はしていませんでした。えー、昨年、漂着、あ流木の破砕機を買いましたので、このように、えー、漂着ゴミとして回収するようになりました。この漂着ゴミですが、えー、いろんな形をしたものがあって、一袋に詰めると、隙間がたくさんできます。これをそのまま、あ当該に、えー、海上輸送すると、もっとたくさんのお金がかかります。ということで、菊津破砕機というものを買って、チップにして、ぎゅうぎゅうに詰めて、コストを下げようという動きをしています。で、このように、どうしても、お、凹凸があるので、破れてしまいますので、また新たに袋を使う、そういうコストも削減できます。ここは、えっ、ー、と、主にロープ、漁網の漂着物のゴミを集めているところです、えー、これ以外にもこのように V、えー、ハイプラスチックですねハイプラスチックの中にも多く浮きのようなものがたくさんありますで、えー、このハイプラスチックを使う油化するとあの発泡スチロールだけで作る床,そ床下油よりもぐっと質のいいものができると言われてますのでそのことに今取り組もうとしていますここにあるのが漂着流木を破砕する木くず破砕機ですここで流木を細かく砕いて砕いたものをこちらのマシンに移してふるいにかけますでチップをの大きさをいろいろ変えていくという。になってますはい、えー、とここは漂着流木を集めてるところになります、保管してるところになります、えー、ここは袋のまんま保管するのではなくて、袋から出した形で保管しています、えー、とそれは、えー、漂着流木がしたくさん塩分を含んでいるために、雨水にさらして塩分を抜くため、えー、雨にさらして、えー塩分を抜いて機械で、えー、破砕するその機械の負荷をかけないようにするためにこのように裸のまんま放置してますはいここは発泡スチロールを油に変える床装置の場所ですこのように発泡スチロールをそのマシンに入れて粉砕します細かくなったものをこちらで溶かしてて油に変えていきますでここで溶かしたものをあの不純物と分けるような形になりますで、えー、ここでもう一度気化させたものを、えー、水で冷やして油がこちらの方から出てくるようになっていますで,それで出,て出てくる油がこちらの油になりますで一袋にで、だいたい10キロリットルの10リットルの10リットルの油が取れるそうです。1日にして約70リットルの油をここで生成できます。そのうちの30リットルを使ってこの機械を動かすことになっています。Okay, so let's think about this for one second. So this is a really innovative process. So Let's go part by part in this video. The first thing we notice is a lot of、uh, driftwood, a lot of various wood on the beaches. So that's collected. They have a lot of buoys, high plastic, they call it, a lot of different types of buoys, like styrofoam buoys as well. And there's a facility they're making, which is a biomass facility, which can take burnable items and create energy from them, which they're in the process of creating right now. They also have a facility, which you can see here. Which takes buoys and creates oil. Now, that is the first time I've seen that. Has anybody seen this before? And that's an audience question.、Um, and moving forward,、uh, so this process you can see here takes a huge problem and tries to find a solution to this. And these machines, they're very few and far between. And I think the, the money to invest in, in technology like this is not as high as it should be. And we should hopefully find more investments for this. But it's really excellent that they found a solution or a solution, a temporary solution to this problem, how to mitigate to some extent, how to prevent this problem from becoming out of control and actually finding something to do with these buoys. One thing you don't see on this video, which I want to tell you, there's actually this machine's broken right, well, temporarily down right now in the video because 
they in some buoys and apparently they say they're from China I don't know where the buoys are from but when the buoys are made people put metal and waste metal inside the center of the buoys so when this machine grinds them up it actually takes on metal and then that's what clogs the system so it's it's fairly interesting like right in the center of the buoy there would be a copper wire or some type of metal wire that's just there in the middle of the buoy and that they find so they actually cut the buoys in half before they throw them in to make sure there's no wires in the center of the buoys which makes the process a little longer and sometimes they don't catch it and the machine breaks down um, but that's so that's really interesting technology innovative technology on that side now um, the last thing I want to talk about which so this is the end of the uh, pr part one of the presentation part two is actually about the Japan and Korea kayaking expedition now if I have to include that in the part one I'll do that but that will talk about the first ever kayaking expedition from Japan to South Korea with the goal of raising awareness about beach trash but more importantly creating a community between Japan and Korea and recognizing that we have to be international partners. We have to work together to solve this problem. And if we can, this problem will be solved. And as I said, in this presentation, I showed some examples of Japan and Korea beach cleanups. But in the next presentation, I'm going to show you what we've done and how we worked with many organizations in Korea and how we are doing that right now to build a bridge between Japan and Korea, an environmental bridge, per se, between in, uh, Japan and Korea to hopefully find a solution to this problem of beach trash. So I hope you enjoyed the part one of the presentation, and that's it.